Howdy y'all. Uh, back out here in the shop. Gonna go ahead and get some freeze plugs put in and some pistons put in this 302. So what I got here, fellas, is five brand new freeze plugs and one used one. But the used one didn't have any holes in it or and not that no real rust or anything. Had some water corrosion on the inside, so I cleaned off and got it silver. So um, the only difference is you'll see is it's black versus or like some kind of blue or something versus the chrome. And then I put thread locker around all of them. Uh, it just helps with the sealing process. So we got those three there and those three there all done. Now we're going to go ahead and get some pistons in this thing. On second thought I need to wait to put the pistons in. I need to uh, go in jump on Amazon or something I don't know what. Maybe Summit, we'll see who has the best price for it. I need to get a bore brush uh, just to throw cross hatches in it. The bores are in really good condition, so. Um, but I want to throw some cross hatches in it and just clean out a little bit of the. Let's see if we can look down in there at all. Let me try and get this turned towards some light. Not really. But overall. Uh, it's got some dirt and some hair in there, some wind blowing crap around. But overall, it's, the cylinders are not bad at all. Um, they just need a little bit of cleaning up and some cross hatches thrown in, which is what those bore brushes are good for. It's, uh, let me see if I can find it. Yep, there it is. This thing right here is for the uh, lifter holes, but I use it for other things too. It's just like this, but it's a lot bigger around. So it'll go into the four inch holes. So, and you just run it up and down real fast and you're done. Throw in a little bit of uh, transmission fluid onto it and uh, clean it up, wipe it out. And uh, she's good to go. I just gotta go order the brush. Um, it's not good for fixing the bore cylinders though. A brush like this is only good for a little bit of cross hatching and cleaning up. It's not good, like if you have an uneven spot inside your bore or something, then that you, can't, you don't want to use these. They ain't going to do anything to fix that. Because these are made specifically to evenly go in all the little cracks and crevices and crap and just clean them out. And that's pretty much it. It isn't to smooth anything off or fix anything. So if you have an uneven cylinder, then you need to get the stones. And that's a whole different story. You got to be real careful. You don't want to go too big. You know, it's almost like you're slowly sanding the board down, making the board bigger. So you have to be careful with those stones. Uh, but these, you don't really have to. You just run them in and out and you're done. This is just a clean up. If I had seen any like scratches in the cylinders or anything, then I would go with the, uh, the stones. But there is nothing in these cylinders. They're just they're nice, smooth, and even I'll still a little bit of cross hatching.
but I want it better than that. I want to make sure I get a good seal on my rings. So we're on the break-in period. And uh, I was talking to my buddy about that cam. He's bringing it over tonight and uh, it is the Lunati. So I was right about that. It's supposed to be a really nice cam, really big. Uh, I don't know the specs on it, but when I get it here, I'll look up the number and uh, see what we can get figured out. See what the specs are on it, what the lift and duration and stuff is. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this clip right here. Um, oh, uh, before I go, though, let me show you the windshield. I got it in my little D50. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> I didn't have a rubber seal for it, and a rubber seal that was on it was no good. So I used uh, this uh, glue stuff, a clear silicone type stuff, put on a thick layer all the way around the middle before I laid the windshield down in there. And uh, then a little bit on the outside, I'm trying to find out where I put it so I can show you what I used. Um, oh, there it is, I see it. I can't remember what it was I used, but I know it was a little bit on the pricey side. Ah, all right, give me a second. I got to turn it because you can't see this stuff. There it is. Let me turn this around. It's a uh, Loctite Power Grip Ultimate Crystal Clear. Interior, exterior. And I've already taken it, and so far, uh, hasn't had any problems with it. And it even rained yesterday, unfortunately. It almost never rains in this state. And two days after I put the windshield in, it rains. It's like, oh my goodness. Well, today's the second day, so not really two days yet, but it rained last night. I guess it was only one day the windshield was in before it rained. It didn't leak, so. That's a plus, plus I've already taken it up and down dirt roads to see if there was any movement or push out or anything. And then I went onto the highway and I did 60 and no problems. So, so far that glue, that Loctite seems to be holding good. If you press on it, it's really tough. I mean, it doesn't, it's not much give to it at all. So I'm guessing we're gonna be, oh, uh, yeah, I know I ramble a lot got a couple of projects coming up other than their drag car um, that Jeep right there that's a 96 Jeep Grand Cherokee limited with the 5.2 in it 318 and uh, I'm gonna be pulling that into the shop and tearing it down not the engine but like everything the interiors all falling out uh, there's something wrong with the swaying I'm gonna be changing the transfer case uh, I got a T249 old drive transfer case in it right now. It's going to the T246 transfer case so I could have two wheel drive when I want it instead of being in four wheel drive all the time. And uh, the other project we got coming up, we're going to be painting a uh, 1962 Ford Fairlane uh, Sport Red. It's kind of like a fire engine red, a bright red. Right there. We're going to be painting that red, and there should be a black stripe that goes from the front all the way to the back. And uh, this is the one my dad's working on. It also has a 5.0 in it with a uh, 5-speed manual trans out of a Mustang. And uh, an aluminum drive shaft out of a police interceptor. Crown, back door, Crown Victoria. <laughs> so... <coughs> it's pretty decent it's a nice old car the bumper and stuff works already in the shop my dad it's my dad's car he was doing a little bit of practicing with uh the painting and stuff <coughs> he's gonna prime it first and then paint it but we got to strip down all the uh shiny stuff the, tri the trim you know all the chrome off of it has a lot of chrome pieces that are bolted onto the outside of it uh, all that's got to come off, tail lights out, and uh, get it all taped up. We're going to prime it, wash it, prime it, 
and uh, get it painted in the shop in here. So, um, so that's a couple another a couple more projects that's coming up here real soon. We'll, we'll get on, but for now, um, I'm gonna go in and order that bore brush I need to clean these cylinders out. And uh, I guess we'll go from there. Got to, I guess it'll be a couple days before I make another video here. But I got lots of stuff I need to get done anyway, so. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, I got a couple uh, other things ordered coming up here real quick. Kind of exciting. I got, uh, well, for me it is anyways. I got hood pins for, for the front and uh, hood, or trunk pins for the rear. And I also ordered a uh, race adjustable racing tail fin. Um, I honestly can't remember what the heck they're called, but you bolt them onto your truck trunk and they stick up like six, eight inches and they got a fin that goes across. It's like 42 inches across and it's adjustable. So you can get it up or down depending on what you're trying to do and how you're trying to, you know, what, what gives you the best times and plants your helps plant your tires from the wind force when it shifts, it shifts gears at high speed. Hopefully that'll work. I really don't know if they work or not, but it says they do. We'll find out. Guess when I get a few passes in and try different things, just only the tail fin and stuff, different directions to see if there's a change. <clears throat> but I guess uh, that's where I'm at. I just want to give you that little update. Got some cool stuff coming in. Thanks. How do you Back out here in the shop. Just give a little update and uh, talk about the engine a little bit. Uh, I did get that cam from him, from my buddy. Uh, but it ended up not being a, uh, a Lunati cam. He thought it was, but when he got there and pulled it out of his shop, it ended up being a Comp Cam Extreme Energy uh, cam. And it has, it's a 498 lift. 498, 284, or 498, 286, something like that. Let me see. It's on the box. Still, it's got the original box with it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, 498, 282. Yeah. So it's, I don't know if it'll show up on the camera. Oh, Ford Performance. I thought it was said Comp Cam. Nope, it's Ford Performance. Okay, well, when he handed it to me yesterday, he said it was Comp Cam, but I guess it's not. It's, uh, it's a Ford Performance 498 282. That should be a pretty decent cam. It's not too big, not too small. It's like the stock cam that I took out of there, the UA41. That one was like, uh, I think they said, I can't remember exactly. It was either 360 something and 380 something. And I don't know what the duration was, but it had a different lift, 368 to 386 or something like that on the different lobes. Had two different lifts, instead of being, both being the same lift. Um, but I did go ahead and do up the, uh, compression ratio for this I had to slap a piston in it to do it because I had to measure my deck clearance and it's about 0 0.040 and then use my little digital chronometer there thingy whatever the heck it is and you got the cam in the only thing that worries me a little bit is there might have been some some paint still on the bearings because the cam is super tight. I lubed it really good with anti with the uh, engine lube, engine assembly lube. Um, and I put it on all the lobes and all the bearings and everything before I put it in there. So I know it's well lubed. And it turns, it just doesn't turn easy like the crank does. It's really hard to turn, but it does. All right, come on, get on there. Uh. Wow, that's being difficult. Nuts acting like there's 
something wrong with it. There, it's on there. See it? Oops, it does turn. But it's just really tight. And for some reason, my uh, double roller timing set did not show up in the mail today. And it says it's still out for delivery, which I find very hard to believe. Being it's like 11 o'clock at night. Ah, cancer stick went out. Um, but I got roller lifters for it coming. I got the roller lifters already here. And I have the retrofit kit coming in the mail. I am going to have to drill and tap the block for this because it bolts down here and here somewhere. I don't know exactly where, but it bolts down. So you got to drill and tap the metal plate that holds the locks down over top of the lifters. And they said, I said in the video that I watched that you got to drill it out, then tap it. And be careful not to drill too far because you can hit a cam bearing where they need to go, where they get bolted. But I'll, I'll double check all that and check the thickness and stuff and see how far I can drill and where I can do it. And, but it should be a fairly simple, straightforward procedure. I've got tap sets, both metric and standard, and uh, I got everything else I should need. Um, I didn't want to use the stock valve covers, so I went ahead and I ordered uh, a set of chrome valve covers, and they were kind of pricey. The cheapest ones I could find anywhere were $99. Uh, it was 100 bucks for the pair, which I... 50 bucks for a valve cover seems a little bit pricey to me a piece, but it's the cheapest ones. But, and they have the tall profile. So if I can go ahead and, you know, get stuff switched to where I want, not to worry about it, and they're baffled. So that's a good one. So I want it to definitely be baffled because when they're high RPM, they'll throw all the oil up top of the engine right into the catch can. And I don't want to do that. Um, what else do I got coming here? Uh, oh, um, instead of using, <laughs> you know how I was talking about using that right there, I decided against it and I went ahead and I ordered a, uh, aluminum intake four barrel, uh, racing intake. I can't remember what the brand was, but it had like, I don't know, 582 reviews and it was five star. So... And it's, uh, it's power band is between 1500 RPMs and 6500 RPMs. And I'm going to be running between 2500 and 6500. Those are my power, that's my area that I plan on running. Um, and 65 will be at the most I want to push it. Because the stock bottom end ain't going to probably hold it. Uh, not at that type of RPM. Yeah. Even though, even if it is fairly new and in good condition, I still don't think it'll hold it very well at all. But the cam's definitely going to have to get wore in, and I'm going to use uh, diesel oil, like Rotella or something along those lines, in it, so I don't have to add the zinc additive because it'll already have it in it. Diesel engine oil already has the zinc additives in it, so that should be fine. What else do I got coming? I got the intake. Oh, I got the electric fuel pump and Evil Energy uh, braided chrome uh, fuel lines coming with uh, six AN outlets, three eighths internal. Because I don't want to use five sixteenths line, and I'm still not sure what I'm doing for a fuel tank yet. Um, that I don't know. Oh, I got new E3s coming in. Hopefully, they're the right ones. They may not be. Heck, I don't even know. Uh, because it says it says they fit uh 68 to 2001 uh Ford Mustangs, but at the same time, it calls for a different plug for the 71 than it does for the uh like the 88 Mustang 5.0. So I don't know if they're just a different heat range, if the threads are different different depth or something I don't know 
Uh, that's something I'll just have to figure out. They're the wrong plugs, the wrong plugs, and I'll hold on to them because they'll work for this other set of heads. It's work for that set of heads, or it's going to work for this set of heads. Oh, the other things I I got I got the uh, Pro Comp Speedmaster uh, distributor set. Comes with a coil, wires, the distributor, all of it. And uh, so it's just pretty much plug and play, and there you, and you go. And I did start on the head. Let me show you that. Should have recorded some of this stuff, but I was only doing it for like a few minutes at a time and going back in and sitting down. And my hips really been bothering me today, and my leg feels super, super weak. Like every time I step down on it, it feels like I'm going to go to the ground, but I don't. flip this around yeah I started cleaning up the surface uh, and uh, removed the valves and everything out of it and yeah e7 te well that's probably gonna be about um thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time howdy y'all back out here in the shop and uh, we're gonna go ahead and start porting these heads I got from my buddy. They're late 80, early 1990 uh, E7 TE heads off a Mustang. Mustang 302. And we're gonna go ahead and start porting them. Unfortunately, I can't really show you uh, the actual inside of me actually porting so I got no way to hold the camera and port at the same time So when I'm porting I'm just gonna have it in fast forward and a little bit off to the side But so you can still see the general idea of what I'm doing. This is the intake side There's not much gonna be getting done with the intake side just basically um, taking these lips off all the way around and maybe trimming this down right here on the right side there's a big lump that's where the bolt hole head bolt holes go through and I could take some of that off that shouldn't really hurt anything I'm not it's not like I'm gonna be taking it all off just slimming it down so give it a little bit better airflow because the intake side of these are pretty good they're not too bad at all but I just want to give it a little bit more airflow than what it has and make sure I lessen up the restrictions. So this side won't take too long. And the other side is the exhaust side. That's going to take a little bit of time. They got EGR humps in there that's got to be taken all the way out. Plus the lips. Plus I got to do the bowls of the valves. So, all right. Let me see. Let's try and get this camera set up so you guys can see something here. Let's see. I don't know how well that's going to work, but uh. all right, we're about to begin.
right. Let's see if I can get a light on this at all. So you can see what I did. Basically cleaned it up and took the lips off the uh, edges all the way around the hole. I didn't get a complete gasket match because gaskets aren't always perfect. Oops, I gotta shine it on the right hole, I suppose. There we go. And that takes care of the intake side. That is the real easy side, anyways. You really, normally on most heads, you don't have to really mess with the intake. I basically just wanted to give it all the clean up and take off the edges is basically all I wanted to do. Um, plus these heads have really good flow for the intake anyway, so. That's not the problem with these heads. The problem with these heads is the exhaust. That's absolutely horrendous flow in them. But we're gonna fix that, so. All right, I'm gonna flip this over to get on the exhaust side. All right, I'm gonna show you this. Hopefully, let me see if you can even see it. Yeah, this is what they currently look like. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get on them and get the exhaust ported. Alright, EGR bump is completely gone, kind of uh, smoothed it out a little bit back there as best I could with the tools that I have. The flow is looking like it's pretty decent now compared to what it was. Um, so I know it'll have more flow than it did, if nothing else. Now, I don't want to go too much further on anything because... I don't want to hit any water jackets or anything like that or bolt holes or nothing so I'm going to leave it about like that and I'm going to do the other three just like this. Oh I wanted to uh, show you the EGR hump that I took out. See it? It's right there.
All right, I'm not going to bore you too much. I'm basically done with the exhaust port and the intake port. The only thing I still have to do is to bowl a little bit uh, down around the valve guides. Let me blow this out. I'll show you this. There, flip it around. Probably too bright with the flashlight. But EGR is gone and uh, it's gasket matched for the most part. It's not perfect, but it's more flow than what it had. I'm just not a professional porter or anything like that. Um, I've only ever ported one set of heads before in my life and they're on a running vehicle right now. So, must have done something right. Uh, this is my second set of heads that I've ever ported. So, I'm doing my best. I am no professional. No one's ever trained me. Um, just using a little bit of common sense and some YouTube University. <laughs> Sorry, I know that's funny, but true. <laughs> so, between <coughs> YouTube University and my common sense, the vehicles still run when I get done porting their heads. And I'm sure that they're flowing better than what they were originally. <clears throat> I'm just hoping that with this big cam I got. Oh, and I found out that the cam I got is not the one that's in the box. It is actually a, uh, that was just an old box he had and he put it in there. Uh, I did not know that and he didn't tell me that at first. But I started talking to him and asked him and he was like, oh no, that's not what the cam is in there. The lift is uh, 548 on it, and it's still 280 something for the duration. So, it's a bigger cam than I thought it was, but that's cool. Makes some pretty noises, if nothing else. So, <laughs> all right, guys, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna end this uh, video off here now. Uh, get this uploaded tonight, and I'm gonna finish doing the uh, bowls and and uh, be done with this head and that's all I can do uh, then I need to take a break before I ever think about like a day or so before I start messing with the other head because sitting in this chair and doing this puts me in a lot of pain and and I can only do so much at a time so a little bit each day but I do have some surprises coming so stay tuned to listen to this Okay, we're going to have some unboxing videos coming up. I've got a bunch of stuff coming in between the whole ignition set system, um, between distributor, uh, coil, plug wires, um, and then I have, uh, oh yeah, a GT spoiler, adjustable spoiler for the rear. Um, hood and trunk pins um, an intake I went and picked up that hot old Holly single pump carburetor um, well I didn't pick it up I found it found out where it was and I got it uh, I think I know there's more stuff that I got coming in the mail oh the double roller timing set did not show up again today but now it's Saturday so Earliest I'm going to see it is Monday. Said it was out for delivery again today. Then it said it showed back up at the uh, facility again today. So, packaging and mailing. You never know if or when you're going to get anything. In my assault racing intake. Um, oh, valve covers. Um, yeah, a few different things I got can't remember it all but uh, we got enough for a running engine so when it all gets here the last thing that's supposed to be delivered or estimating the little the delivery date is this next Friday which is uh, six days from today so we'll see if everything comes in there's probably some stuff that I ordered that uh, I haven't mentioned I just can't remember it all bunch of stuff for this engine to get it up and going However, there is one thing I'm missing. 
that I'm going to look around and see if I can find one in this garage. It's got to be here somewhere. And it's a harmonic balancer and a harmonic balancer bolt. And I'm pretty sure a 351 will fit down there too. And I know I have a couple of 351s. And I have a 4.6, which is a 289 out in the back. So I think I'll have one regardless, either way. I just got to look around first to shop and see if I can find this one that was in here. If I can't find this one, then I got to go out to the old 351 and see if there's one on that one. If there's not one on that one, then go out to the 4.6 and see if there's one on that one. <sighs> But it does appear that we're going to be going with uh, Serpentine Belt. And not the V-Pulley like I did Frankenstein. It'll give me more grip anyway, so I think that'll be better. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't have the time. I say one thing, I'm thinking about it, and it's like, oh yeah, I should probably do that. To say it, and then... Later on, I'm thinking, well, there's no way I can do that. That's going to cost me an arm or leg to get this and that and this and that. Anyways, folks, I think I already said multiple times I was ending this off. But here goes. It's done now. My outro. Peace.